makes me happy. It makes me feel proud of myself. And I want to do things that make me proud of myself. I am headed to the gym. It is a earlier morning workout, which I have not been doing lately. I used to have a schedule at work that required me to go super early to the gym and then get off to work. And then it changed. And I sort of make my own schedule now and I can go to the gym whenever I want. But it resulted in me sleeping in, not getting to the gym early, not getting my workout done early, sort of having to find time for it later on and that became less fun and I felt less good about myself going later and it became a hassle and I wanted to get it in but sometimes things would come up between work and my new hours sort of being whenever I needed to work because I'm on like a special assignments thing as opposed to day turning, day reporting. So it's just been a little bit of an adjustment and I know that going early and getting it done makes me happy. It makes me feel proud of myself. And I wanna do things that make me proud of myself. So we are heading to the gym, early morning workout, getting the day started. And I think that's just gonna make my whole day better. So that's what we're gonna do. So some of you have noticed that sometimes my gym does the strength after the Metcon. That's not what we're doing today. More traditional today, we are doing the strength first. So it is every 90 seconds for 12 minutes, three touch and go power snatches. So I'm not gonna show all of those power snatches, but basically I built in weight over these sets. And my goal at the end of the sets, which my last set will be the next ones you see, was to do 95 pounds. Because for some reason, the difference between 95 pounds and 85 pounds is about 50 pounds in my brain. Don't come at me with the math, it's just the way it feels. So this is 95 pounds. I was pretty happy with the way this cycled and looked and felt. So I wanna make that a more routine weight for when I do snatches. Anyway, on to the Metcon. So, about to go. So it is on your screen, four time, five power snatches. The weight is 115 for men, 73 or 75, whatever your gym calls it for women. 10 pull-ups, 15 or 12 calories on the row. Then you rest one minute. Then it is 10 snatches, 20 pull-ups, and then more calories on the rower. And then you rest, and then it goes even higher up in reps. So we will see as I go through. This is that first set though, five, 10, and then 15 or 12, 12 for me. This was fast. This first set was fast, 30 seconds, and I'd already finished the snatches and the pull-ups. And that was a really great set of butterfly pull-ups. They don't stay that great. That was it. This was an unbroken round. I uh, don't know if I advise that or a not. Uh, you do have a minute rest, so that helps. But like, this is the only unbroken round, at least for the pull-ups. The row is always unbroken. You know, you can always stay on that rower. Just row a little bit slower if you need, but uh, the snatches and the pull-ups definitely go downhill as we progress in this workout. So if you try this workout, don't get fooled by how fast the first round is. And after the first round, I was like, whoa, yep, 118. That was fast. I'm looking at the clock. I'm like, that was fast. Did I do something wrong? Did I do this wrong? <laughs> um, so, you know, I think it's okay to go out hot on this first round because you do have this minute rest, but you definitely have to approach the rest of the workout differently. So I had my grips out because I'm like, I'm gonna use my grips for the pull-ups. Spoiler alert, I'm not. I don't like the grips very much. I'm trying to get better with them. Everyone else likes the grips. I don't like the grips. I like feeling the bar. I've gotten used to them for toes to bar, but that's because toes to bar is really just hanging. Where anything that requires me to like pull above the plane of the bar. I just don't like them. Bar muscle ups, pull ups, chest to bar, but I'm trying. So we put them on. So second round after the minute rest will be 10 power snatches, 20 pull ups, 
30 calories for the men, 24 calories for the women. So here we go, getting started on these 10 power snatches. And I do end up going unbroken on this set of 10 too. So I was happy with that, but during the set of 10, I'm like, man, these are a lot. You can definitely do five and five or like six and four if you like to get extra reps out at the beginning, which is something I like to do. I think I just debated putting it down there for a second, but I'm like, damn, you just gotta keep doing this. Get through these, it's only 10. And it's like, at this point, if you're gonna put it down, it's just such a waste of time. So got the 10 done. I'm putting the grips on the front of my hands. I'm gonna try to use them and it's not gonna go well. They're gonna come off. That was the extent of that. And I've already flipped them back. So <laughs> do not like them. And I feel like they don't help with the butterfly motion. My butterflies are good for uh, short reps, like the 10 and going unbroken on them. But as I get into these bigger sets, I'm not as good at using them. I just resort to a gymnastics kip, at least for the first couple of reps. But that's basics, you know, always good to know the basics and be able to whip them out when they're needed. So I just did small sets, just a couple reps, three, two, four, like just like small numbers, but I just kept on getting on it. Some people like to do bigger sets and rest longer, but for me, I rather just break early and often and just sort of move through faster. Just get off and get on, get off and get on. That's my approach. If you can do 20 unbroken, that's the best move though probably, if you want to finish fast. Back on that row, more calories this time. And there'll be even more calories in the last set. I think it is 30, 24, if I'm remembering correct, but I no longer have it up on the screen because I am looking at what you are looking at, but I will find out. It is 30, 24, 30 calories for the men, 20 for the women. For the men, this workout and the rep scheme makes a lot of sense. It's changed a little bit for the women because we just don't pull as hard on the rower most of the time. Equal athletes, like an equal male athlete to an equal female athlete, the man is more likely to pull more calories. Bigger bodies, more weight, that really makes the biggest difference on a lot of these cardio machines. So it is what it is. I would not be able to keep up with the men if, uh, <laughs> if I had to row the same calories as most of them. So it makes sense. And we saw that, you know, in the semifinals when we were looking at some of the workouts that had rowing and some of the workouts that had the bike in it, the echo bike, that the men were just so much faster on those workouts overall because they can just really accumulate calories on those machines so much more quickly than women can just a size thing. So if you're someone like me, I'm 5'3", you're probably never going to be quite as good at the row or at the bike as that six foot two man in your gym. But you might be able to cycle snatches faster, cycle pull-ups faster. That's the nice thing about CrossFit. We all get something, but we don't all get everything. And that's kind of a metaphor for life. CrossFit teaches us lots of things about life. So just finished up that second round, and th that's only halfway through the workout. When you finish the second round, you're halfway through. Taking off these grips because I didn't wear them. They were just weighing down my hands. So <laughs> taking them off. But speaking of CrossFit being metaphor for life, I started out this video by talking about how I'm trying to make myself proud and do things that make me happy, especially when I'm dealing with some adjustments at work. I'm working more on, um, stories that take a little bit more time as opposed to day turning stories like I've done in the past. I'm a reporter for a local news station. So my schedule just looks a little bit different and it's been an adjustment. So I'm trying to adjust to that and using CrossFit to my advantage. But before we keep going with that, let me tell you what this last round is. So you just saw it up on your screen. It is after the one minute rest, 15 power snatches, 30 pull-ups, and then 45 calorie row for the men. 36 calories for the women. This is where I end up breaking up these snatches. Could I do 15 and broken at this weight if I really needed to? Yes. This deep into this workout, it 
didn't make sense. One, with the pull-ups after. And two, it's a lot of snatching at this point. We've already done, you know, 15 previous reps to this and all the reps of snatching in the strength portion for today. So it ends up being chipping away as opposed to the first two rounds where it was unbroken. So just did small sets, chipped away. Also, side note, these rad shoes, this color looks fantastic on camera. Like I thought it looked good in real life, but watching back this video, I'm like, those shoes are sick. I'm a big fan of rads. If you've been here before, you know that. Um, I debated getting this pair because I'm like, do you need another pair right now? Because I had just gotten a pair like two months ago, but I did. I needed these. They're beautiful. They look beautiful. I hope you're enjoying watching them as much as I enjoy wearing them and watching them right now. So back to the pull-ups. And again, we are going to go with small sets, but just getting on the bar quickly over and over again. Just got two reps out of the way. I'm getting some chalk sometimes when I want to get chalk. I'm like, do a couple reps first just to have a couple done, right? Like just get a couple in the bag and then get your chalk and hold on a little bit longer. I like to do that. I think you got to figure out what works best for your brain. But I like to give ideas of things that might help you approach your workouts. And for me, like going unbroken is great when I can, like I did on the first round and the second round with the snatches. Makes all the sense the world is going to be likely, likely your fastest unless you pause at the top or something and you just accumulate a ton of time under tension. But usually going unbroken is going to be your fastest and bet, bet if best bet if you're capable of it but there's if you can't go unbroken I think sometimes quick sets where you're getting back up quickly makes more sense than doing big sets and then taking a really long time to recover because you end up spending a lot of time standing around although I'm spending a bit of time standing around but I'm trying to just keep on getting back up there get back up there get back up there so that's sort of my mentality but you can see this is the last round. We are getting close to 60 pull-ups in this workout. So we're, uh, we're slowing down a little bit, but we're still, we're still moving. We're still moving and grooving. But what I was talking about, doing this early in the day, doing hard things like this CrossFit workout, like all these pull-ups, makes me feel really good. I feel so much better all day when I've gotten this hard thing out of the way, when I've challenged myself. Moving on to this row, let me remind you of the calories. It is 45 for men and it is 36 for women. So basically for men, you just add the amount of reps of power snatches and pull-ups together. And when you add those two together, you get the reps in the calorie row for the men, not for the women though. So it's a little bit more confusing for us. You gotta, gotta look at the board and remember how many reps that you need to do. But getting this hard thing out of the way early in the day for me just sets me up, I feel like, for so much success. And getting out of bed early and like doing something and feeling accomplished early in the day, it's one of my favorite things. So it is something that I like to prioritize. And sometimes when I don't have a set schedule, like the new schedule that I'm on now, it's easy to let that fall to the wayside to be like, I'm tired. I'd like to sleep for another 30 minutes. I'll just go later. I'll figure it out later. But life happens and then things get in the way later. And I feel like when you leave the gym to the afternoon and for some people, that's what works best. Not knocking it. I'm saying for me though, getting up and getting it done makes me feel productive. And I think it just leads to more productivity during my entire day because I've set myself up with doing something hard, with challenging my mind and my body early in the day. And then it just, it snowballs like anything, right? If you stay in bed and it's okay to stay in bed from time to time, but if you consistently stay in bed and you're just slow to start your day, I feel like your day sometimes, especially if your job allows, continues to stay slow. There's just like less motivation, less intensity, less desire from the get-go to really push yourself. But if you wake up in the morning and you push yourself from the start, 
I feel like that sets you up for so much more success. You feel accomplished. You feel like you've done something big. And then it just, you just want to attack more big things. You want to tackle more big things. You just want to continue that momentum because it's already felt so good. So getting back on this schedule of getting up early, even when I really don't have to, has made me feel so good. And I am truly proud of myself, proud of my effort in these workouts, proud of my effort at work and my effort getting used to a new style of work and schedule. And I think that all just leads to really good positive things like this workout ending. Just finished that up. And uh, this is what I'm like, that was hard. That was a hard row. You really had to stay in it and just sort of grind through those pulls and uh, then collapse on the floor like this into my arms and just lay my head on the ground. It's always funny when you see the resting positions after. <laughs> always makes me laugh. Afterwards, I did some squatting, back squats and front squats. This was not programmed, but I've decided to start a hatch cycle because we've talked about it. My legs are, my, I got baby legs. <laughs> They're weak legs. Uh, weak comparative or com you know, compared to where I'd like to be. Not compared to like the average person in the world, but weak compared to where I'd like to be. So we're working on those legs. I've heard good things about the hatch program. I've never really done one. I've seen other people do them and put some numbers on their squats, put some pounds on there. So I'm hoping maybe I'll have the same result, 12 weeks, long time, but hopefully I'll stick with it, finish week one. So this was day one, but I finished week one at this point. So things are going well, I think. That looked hard though. <laughs> Come here. Come here. Hi. Hi. Okay. Back home with Carson. You're mostly just looking at Carson right now. Uh, finished the workout. Did a, well, started a hatch cycle. So hopefully I stick with that. I've never done a hatch cycle before, but I've heard it's sort of simple, effective. Carson's still right here. And uh, lots of squatting. And that's what I need. Always lots and lots of squatting. So <laughs> subscribe if you want to see more of Carson and see if I uh, actually complete this hatch cycle. He's definitely going to bark at me. Carson, come here. He's hungry. He wants his breakfast. He's going to go to the gym early. I don't actually feed him breakfast before I do it after, but it's only like 9.15. So it's really not that late. He can wait a few more minutes for his breakfast. If you're interested to see if I finish the squat cycle, subscribe. If you're interested in more CrossFit content, subscribe for that too. Lots of that to come as always. <laughs> <laughs> more Carson to come. Carson, shh, come say hi again. Come say hi, come on, let's go. Or say bye. Say, okay. All right, we've got to go. Subscribe if you're interested in more of this content. I appreciate y'all for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Okay. You want breakfast? Are you hungry, dog? Yeah? Hungry? Do it again. Shh.